Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Tom. I'm a data scientist in Australia. And in this video, we're going to look at how to build a time series plot using the latest COVID-19 data. So I'm going to put a link to this data in the description below. You can download it by going to this link and then scrolling down the page and then clicking on the confirmed cases. So I noticed there's confirmed deaths and recovered. We're going to focus on confirmed cases and we click on that link and we're going to download the raw data. So to download the raw data, just click on the raw button here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy a link to that and then we'll move over to our studio and create a new R script. So we're going to load in our data. I'm going to use COVID or COVID-19 and we're going to, in fact, what we need to do first, we need to load the tidyverse packages. So we'll load the tidyverse and then we're going to use read CSV to load in the COVID-19 cases from that link. Okay, so now we've loaded our data, let's have a look at the data. So we have a province state, we've got a country region, latitude and longitude, we're not gonna use those. And then each column basically after that corresponds to a, a case count for that date. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple of things just to clean up this data set to make it a bit easier to work with. The first is we're going to use a package called janitor to clean the column names. And, but before we do that, I want to get everything uh, after the longitude column uh, into a longer format. So to do that, we're going to use pivot longer. And this is going to take our dates and create a new column with the counts and a new column with the date. So we're going to say, uh, we're going to exclude these columns from our uh, pivot. So we'll select those columns and then we're going to say, and we're going to use, let's say we use date as the, what's the name of one of the columns and values will go in uh, confirmed in for confirmed cases in. Let's see if that works as we expect. Okay, excellent. So now you can see that it's in a longer format and this is much easier to work with. We're going to do a couple more things as well. So we're going to drop the latitude and longitude columns because we're not going to use those. So we'll just select the uh, those, get rid of those. And then we're going to just rename these two columns as well to make it easier to work with. So let's use uh, province and we'll specify this column, the province state, and we'll also do the same thing for country region. Okay, so this will give us a much cleaner data set to work with. There's one more thing we need to do, which is we need to change the format of the date. Now, what I know is that this means 2020. Now, because there are no more than 12 months in a year, this must be the day. And then of course this must be the month. So we're going to load the Lubridae package to work with dates. So we'll load the Lubridae package and then we're going to do one more mutate. We're going to mutate our, our date column using month, day, year, date. And that will convert our date column to an actual date format. Okay, so there's one more thing we need to do. So at the moment, this data is spread out into the country, like into different provinces in each country. We want to just get the cumulative counts every day for the country region and basically uh, that at a higher level than the province state. So let's uh, use group by, so group by the country region, the date, uh, we're going to then sum the confirmed cases within that country and then ungroup. And excellent, so what that gives us is basically the country, the date and the number of confirmed cases on that date. Okay, so we're going to save this data. We'll save it to, in fact, what we'll do is we'll, we'll use COVID raw to represent our raw data and then we'll specify uh, COVID-19. We'll take it from that, we'll keep our raw data and excellent, so now we have this nice clean variable to work with. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna build a time series graph. So how are we going to do that? Well, the, let's, let's select a particular country. Let's select the United States 
and plot the number of confirmed cases in the United States over time. So let's filter for the country region is the United States. Okay. Whoa, okay, maybe it's just US. It's just US, okay. And now we're going to build a plot. So we're going to specify our x-axis is the date. Our y-axis is confirmed in. And we're going to use the geom line function to specify that it's a line graph. So let's plot that. Okay, so here we can see the number of confirmed cases each day in the United States. Okay, so something to note here is that this is the cumulative total of confirmed cases by that date. It's not actually the um, it's not it's not actually the number of new cases per day. To make it interesting, let's look at the number of new cases per day. So if we if we come back to our COVID nineteen data set, we can actually calculate the number of new cases per day using the lag function. So if we we need to group by the country region, otherwise it will uh, kind of overlap between countries. So we're going to group by our country region, and we're going to uh, yeah that's right. And we need to make sure that we've arranged everything by date so that the lag will work okay. So I arrange our date. Now we're going to do new cases in is the confirmed in minus the lag of confirmed in. So lag is the previous value and our default value is going to be zero. Otherwise it will generate a, a, um, a null value for the first one. And let's see how that one works. Okay, so now let's come back. We'll filter again for the United States and we're gonna plot our new cases in instead. Okay, so this gives us a much better picture of the number of new cases per day in the United States. Okay, so now let's build out a nice time series plot. So I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save our data here and we'll save it up to that point. And now we're gonna generate a nice plot for the United States. So, uh, Few things we want to do here. So first of all, we want to add uh, a more accurate or more sort of specific x-axis. So let's do that using scale x date, and we we'll use date breaks equals let's say uh, two weeks, and then our date labels uh, will be percent b percent y. And the reason we're using percent b percent y, if we look at the documentation for scale x date. So we can do that like that. We can see down the page that uh, for date labels, uh, codes are defined here, uh, percent B, percent B represents the abbreviated month name and percent Y represents the, uh, the year. In fact, change my mind. So percent B we want to have as a month, but percent D will have the, the day instead. So let's, Let's try running that and see how it looks. Okay, so a little bit messy, but if we zoom in, we can see that uh, we now have the actual day and the abbreviated month down the bottom. Okay, a couple more changes we're going to make. So we're going to add some, uh, some, some labels. So the x-axis, let's call the date. Uh, the y-axis, we'll call new cases. Um, and we're going to add a description as well. So we'll call it uh, title is uh, new confirmed COVID-19 cases in the United States. Um, okay. Now, one, one other thing I like to do is I like to change the theme. So to change the theme, we can do a couple of things. One of the things we can do is we can use, we can specify down here, we can say theme minimal. Um, or else we can just set the theme earlier off the page, which is what we're going to do just because I, I typically use the same theme across the board. So we'll set theme minimal up here. Okay, and now we have a much cleaner, much cleaner plot. Okay, one more thing would be nice to do. It'd be nice to just add commas here so we can use scale y continuous and then we'll specify our um, Lab labels is let's get this from the scales package comma whoops I think I misspelled whoops there we go that's better okay so now 
What if we wanted to look at a couple of a couple of regions? So what if we wanted to look at the US uh, for, at Australia as well as the United States? So to do that, we could copy this code and come down to the next section and we can filter for country region is in either the United States or in Australia. So you can see that um, it's actually generated, uh, it's kept both Australia and the United States in this data set. Um, okay, so the next step here is we're gonna, we're gonna add a color aesthetic and that's gonna say that we need to split the, um, the graph into two separate lines and they'll have a different color and that color will be, will be based on the country region. So let's use color equals country region. Um, so new confirmed COVID cases and we'll change uh, in Australia and United States. Okay, let's plot that. Okay, so you can see here that there's quite a big difference in the number of new cases in Australia versus the United States. What I'm going to do to kind of show this more accurately is I'm going to split out Australia from the United States. So to do that, we can use the facet wrap function. So facet wrap, we're going to specify that we want to do that by the country region. And we will run that. And I'll show you what that does. So uh, this will split the graph into two instead. Now, I want to keep everything in one column just because it's a bit easier to compare with the dates. So we'll use incol equals one to keep it in one column. So now the, both the plots are in the same column. And we want to use scales equals free y. And scale equals free y basically says that for both plots they can have a free y axis. In other words, it can go as like basically the height can vary uh, from, from zero to whatever the highest value is. Okay, so now we can get a much better sense of how our country regions uh, are comparing. We're gonna do one more thing, which is we're gonna remove our country region legend because it's kind of taking up a bit of space that would be better for the plot. So to do that, we're just going to go back up to here to our geom line and we're going to use show.legend is false. Okay, let's run that. Okay, fantastic. So this is our final result. Uh, this is basically how to build a time series plot and I've gone through a bit of detail. If you found this helpful, uh, please consider subscribing for more content like this uh, or let us know in the comments below what questions you have about time series forecasting because I plan to do some more videos like this in the future. Take care.